Welcome to Warped Quarry. I am Vaishali. I am Yogi. And I'm Gear. Uh, today we have a wife, a mother of two, uh, someone with a full-time career with a pharmacy degree, an MBA, and another degree with five letters that I have no idea what they mean, but we'll find out. She volunteers at the, the Mandir and is a social media influencer, our friend Nikki Patel. Hello. There we go. Welcome. Thanks for What's having up? me. How are you? So hey. all of us know you a little bit, but there's a lot we don't know about you. And I think obviously the world, there's a lot that they don't know about you, even though you're on social media. So we're going to try and answer that today. So we're going to start you off with a, an easy question, or I'm going to start you off with an easy question. Um, what is the meaning of life? What is the meaning of life? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's no. so deep. You know, we usually kind of ease into the, the questions, but we're just going to go straight into it. Um, we just so jump right in. You, you don't have to answer that yet. We are going to get okay. to that uh, as a question. But uh, the reason I said that is because it seems like you have everything figured out. But before we get to all that, uh, what do you really do for work? Because, again, there's five letters on your LinkedIn that say CDCES that I've never heard about. So what do you do for a career and what does that mean? So... I'm in healthcare. I'm a pharmacist by background. I ended up doing my MBA when I was working as well. And then during COVID, I got another sort of certification, which is a certified diabetes care and education specialist. So I do, I basically focus on diabetes, obesity, cardiovascular disease. I do a lot of education and presentations. Um, but yeah, so I'm in the corporate world as a um, as a pharmacist, and I do a lot of education. That's the simplest way of putting it. So you don't actually work in a pharmacy at all? No, I used to. I used to work for CBS and independent pharmacies, and now done with that phase and working in corporate. And is wow. it predominantly from home, or do you go into offices? So my role is client-facing, so I'm in the field. So I do cover a geography and I have to go into the field. I do a lot of work from home, but I also have to go out to New York City, Philadelphia, the different customers that I work with and meet in person. So it really depends on the day, but I do a lot of my work from home. So All how right. often how often do you travel? So that's this kind of stuff like behind the scenes that I, I don't really share too much about my work on social media, but I do travel a couple times, um, I would say like once a week at least. Um, sometimes like this week I was out of the office, like out of my home office, like three days. Sometimes I'm traveling for a week, a few days at a time. Um, it's travel has definitely picked up, but it I would say at least like four or five times a month I'm traveling. And 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 I know you don't want to, you might not want to talk about it too much, but just it helps for our background, right? Is it traveling meaning like, hey, you just going somewhere in the morning, coming back at night? Or are you flying out, staying in hotels and coming back a day or two later? So it depends, um, is both. So last month I was out for two weeks. I was flying like Monday to Thursday or Tuesday to Thursday. Um, in April, I was out to essentially two weeks from home, but then sometimes I'm going in the morning and coming back in the evening. So it, so that's, it's a, it's a mix of both. That's exhausting. That's exhausting, I'm sure, as a mom, as being involved as you are, you know, at home on there. And that's exhausting. That's 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 inspiring. I need to do better. <laughs> no, it's not. I know I just saw something this morning on Instagram, like, you know, especially my husband always makes fun of me because he's like, when you're traveling, it's like you're on vacation because you don't have to worry about anything at home. And I, I, I do appreciate everything that they do at home because I do feel like being at home is harder than working, you know, because mm -hmm. I kind of can do whatever I need to do of my own schedule when I'm traveling and at home, they're managing everything with the kids, which is a lot more work. So I, I have a lot of appreciation, especially for parents that have to manage everything at home. Um, when the other parent is traveling, it's definitely tough. I feel oh. like it's tougher on the parent that's home. Oh, absolutely. I agree. I, I feel like and I and I should, probably shouldn't even like bring this up, but I feel like it's like that reset for a mom when you get to at least have a little bit of traveling, you know, off site technically from I think it's like that a quick little reset, like, OK, mm -hmm. now let's get back to it kind of a thing. So 
Lucky. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'm the most productive when I'm traveling, to be honest. Like I got all, all the home shanti stuff done the last few weeks when I was traveling. Yeah. Let's start off with um, a little bit of a background. Where were you born, raised? I mean, I know you um, mm -hmm. since we were, you know, Tanya Mania kind of a thing, but go elaborate, please. <laughs> So I was born in New Jersey, born and raised Jersey girl, always a Jersey girl and love Jersey. I know there's a lot of haters out there. All right, that's enough. <laughs> don't that's like enough. Jersey, but All right, we're done. That's enough. There's not, it off. No, there's no <laughs> place like home. And Jersey has been my home since the 80s. I mean, I was born here. I love I um, grew up here. Um, my parents came from India. If we're going back then, they came from India in the 80s and then pretty much had me right after. Uh, my mom is obviously an immigrant parent. She's the most hard working parent person that I know had sort of like built her own business from scratch without a lot of family support. Um, I look up to her a lot in terms of her hard work ethic. Um, I grew so I grew up in sort of um, multiple places, but I was in West Orange and then I moved to Island where there is basically brown town. It's all brown mm -hmm. town. Um, <laughs> Yeah. And then I went to pharmacy school and ended up, I mean, I don't know how much detail you want to go into. Let me know. Gary is like looking at me like. <laughs> no, I'm okay. You, we let you talk on the Jersey part. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I'm intrigued. Okay. I love okay. That is my home. So forget these guys. <laughs> yeah. 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 But what good kind of back way. is that? Is that good? Like where I was born that, is kind of boring. Yeah, yeah. Like, you talk <laughs> as much as you want. Uh, when I edit, we'll. See if I, I leave the know. Jersey stuff in there or not. No, but, keep the Jersey that's, that's stuff. Exactly we have to keep the Jersey stuff. That's like only one of two questions I asked. Come on. <laughs> can, we, can we beep out every time she says New Jersey? I, no, I, I we love New Jersey. That. Keep that in there. <laughs> on, on a side note, before we go back into like. the thing, and go back into this, you notice people from Robbinsville, right? They don't say like, hey, where do you live? They'll say Robbinsville. Even if they're in India, they will not say New Jersey. Yeah, that's okay. It's Robbinsville like is part of New Jersey. No, it's yeah. they, they definitely NJ. hide their Jersey identity. People don't know where Robbinsville is. Yeah, I know exactly why. Like, if yeah, hey, where you, Yogi? Where you from? If I say Hopkinton, you're gonna be like, what? Anyhow, that's a, that's, a, <laughs> that's a Jersey jab. Move on. Yeah, so I um I think like high school was a big pivotal time for me in terms of just seeing a lot of facing a lot of peer pressure in high school and. Um, you know, my parents thought it was a great idea to move to Brown Town and be surrounded by a brown community. But I felt and I think, you know, now growing up, I, I've talked to a lot of people that kind of were in the same boat. I think you often feel a lot more pressure being in a community that's just like you and you feel like you have to be like them. So there was a lot of things that I faced in high school. And my parents were were really strict growing up, like strict, but also, you know, they weren't really around. But my parents had um, like a certain way of they wanted me to kind of either obviously like be a doctor or, or go in the medical profession um, or be a lawyer, whatever, you know, some they wanted me to be successful from that perspective, because obviously they came here, they they wanted a better life for their kids. But then, um, you know, when it came time to to getting married, like that was a big thing for us as well. Like my parents did not approve of my husband when they first found out. First of all, they found out when either. I was 17. <laughs> so they were really upset about, there's a whole story about that. Um, did you, did you just blow right by Gayer's comment? Oh yeah, I did. What did you say? When you said uh, my parents <laughs> my didn't parents approve didn't of my approve. husband, I just said, we don't either. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Question. Just so everyone knows, I mean, Gayer and I have known uh nikki's husband for a long time much longer than nikki um because his cousin lives up here in boston and we're really good friends with him mm. yeah so yeah right, there's, so a, there's a whole story behind our like love story and and how our parents came to finally accept him but there was a lot of a lot of my like child not childhood but like young adulthood was dealing with a lot of this this family pressure and societal pressure and um, peer pressure in, in high school and college. And so I think that's also formed a lot of my experiences now and sort of my path and my, my vision for my family and my future and how I want to kind of 
break cycles in that perspective. And a lot of the, the goals that I have now outside of my profession has really evolved around or revolved around nurturing family and um, mm -hmm. being there emotionally, not just from a educational standpoint, financial standpoint for my kids, but also emotionally and spiritually. I think that's really important. So you brought up earlier how, um, you know, you travel a lot and uh, your husband kind of, you know, jabs you with the fact that, you know, you get a vacation in a mm -hmm. sense, um, even though you're at work. So obviously you're not getting a vacation, but uh, I wanted to bring this in. Um, this is a post that you had, right? Uh, which you and your husband, Manan, talk about gender equality starting at home. Now, the post has a lot of what he put in as to what his thoughts were and how you guys kind of live. The question I kind of have is gender equality is a bit tough, right? Equal means that both sides are equal. Now, obviously, I'm all for women doing more, being able to have the equal uh, share of their success, their abilities, their uh, especially in their profession and whatever they want to do. But sometimes the opposite end of it is, is it really equal or is it sometimes that the women become equal or end up trying to do more where the sometimes the guys don't feel equal at times? So what's your question? <laughs> I don't know. That's a good Gears, question. <laughs> what Gear is trying to do is he's trying to flip the script. He's trying to say, <laughs> like, we don't have rights anymore. <laughs> Yeah. So I, br I bring it up because there's a, there's a, and I'll cut out the little part, but I bring it up because there's a whole movement right now. So it doesn't have to do with gender, but it's more about race where it blows my mind, but it, you know, what the, the, the nicest way to say it, what the non-whites have gone through, the whites right now feel like they're going through, which still, again, makes no sense to me. So I see this happening in a sim similar manner where, uh, again, I'm all for women doing what they do, what you do, you know, WNBA, all of that stuff. I mean, that's a huge thing right now with uh, Caitlin Clark and stuff we've talked about before. Um, but is there a place where it doesn't become equal and it becomes the other direction? And is that good or bad? So I can just tell you from our experience because that's what I know. And I know speaking to other parents and other women and men that kind of have gone through different situations, right? So I think if we think about how we grew up and we what we are modeled in terms of our parents and their gender roles and what we see in society, it's very different. Our parents, like I know my my dad was not involved, right? I mean, I think things have changed now. He's like taking care of my my kids, their their grand his grandkids. But growing up, he didn't necessarily change diapers. He was always the one that was off working and kind of left all the household tasks for my mom or for his mom, etc. But my mom, she was working. She had her own business. She didn't have as much support from her fam, our family. My dad didn't even support her initially when she started her store and was an entrepreneur. So she's doing this all on her own while raising us. And then she's coming home and she's taking care of us. She's taking care of us while like I used to take a bath in our store sink like every day in the morning. My mom would take me to the store and we my brother and I would take a bath in the sink. And like there's like customers in the front and she'd like have like a little curtain. And so she was like doing all this stuff right now. And, and obviously now things are different. We were, the goal is to really change and break some of those cycles because now, you know, women are, are working. We recognize that women play a, a larger role in society. They're, they're working, they're raising kids. They're, they have this mental load as well in terms of, you know, taking care of, all the things like this week is teacher appreciation week and it's mother's day this weekend. So we're taking on a lot of the mental load of organizing calendars, routines, you know, managing schedules and all of, all of the things that are kind of invisible, the invisible load. And now it's time to sort of break some of those 
set goals, break those barriers to also recognize that women are doing a lot more behind the scenes and level the playing field. I think for us, um, we've seen that from both our sides, like both my my parents, his parents, and you know how that affects the kids, right? Because now it's it's men are doing a lot more in terms of taking an equal responsibility of childcare. Women are doing a lot more from a from a work life balance perspective, being you know working in the in the workforce. So it's really about creating that that opportunity for both parties to be involved to really play an equal role because it is important like just seeing my husband be so involved with the kids it makes a huge difference in my family that role is played by my mom so my Mm -hmm. parents and i live together um and my mom nurtures the best like I, i couldn't ask for a better mother she gets along great with my wife um and sometimes my wife and i are both hard on the kids right? Mm -hmm. And to me, that nurturing person in the house is my mom. She'll just come and swoop in and the kids are very close with her and they enjoy their time with her. And she's just kind of that like, hey, you know, your parents are getting mad, but they have a reason to, you know, but she says it in a different way. She reiterates it differently. So that's kind of my transition into this next question, living with in-laws, right? I know my perspective. Oh, my parents are great. Everything's perfect. I I grew up with it, right? I don't know my wife's perspective. What is yours on living with your in-laws? So we were all, we always lived together. We got married 12 years ago, 11 years. Actually, we got married 11 years ago, <laughs> 2013. <laughs> so 11 years ago. So, and so, so to jump in about gender equality, see, we just laughed it off that you didn't know. Mm-hmm. If one of us did that, it would be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Wait till your wife hears this. You know? Well, you I'm know, in our money. family, the roles are reversed in many ways. So, <laughs> you know, it's it just works like that. Now you feel our pain. I forget everything. It's all good. <laughs> My husband knows that. Um, so yeah, we've been living together for 11 years and it's been it's been a big adjustment for us. It wasn't always easy, even though it might look like that now on social media because I share about how things are great now and or at least great, not great, but it's a lot better than it was. I think and especially in this generation, there's a lot of taboo or discomfort or just negative perception of living with in-laws. And because there's this huge focus or emphasis on being independent and living your own life and holding boundaries. And it, that's great. I mean, I think it's important, well, especially in certain situations where there is toxic relationships and um, you don't you don't need some of that, you know, toxic toxicity in your life. I totally get that. What were you so going to say? We're early on. So correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like early on, it might have been rough, or maybe everyone didn't see eye to eye. And then later Mm -hmm. on, and now things are working out. What were some of the issues, if you don't mind sharing? So it would sometimes there would be, you know, my mother in law was working, I was working, but I was working from home, right? A lot of times I would I've had a very flexible schedule. So, you know, she would come home, she had a very challenging job, she was on her feet, all day walking like 15, 20,000 steps a day. So understandably, she'd come home really exhausted. And my mom never taught me how to cook. Like that's one thing I want to teach both my kids to how to cook because I didn't know, this is embarrassing, but I didn't know what ajmo was. I didn't know what like a lot of the spices were because I never had to cook. My mom and my mom were like, you study, you just, you know, get, you know, focus on your school. We'll take care of cooking and just, you know, so I never learned. So when I got married and mom would be at work, she would not expect me, but I would obviously offer like I'm home. So I'm going to, you know, let me know what I can make or let me know if I can prep anything for dinner. So I would, you know, try to make food or, you know, she would help me. Right. But sometimes um, there would be like dishes left in the sink. And that's one pet peeve in our family. Like, people don't like dishes in the sink because that, you know, that just people have their, their things. Like I know a lot of moms that are like that. They just want to have a clean counter, clean sink. Um, And it's such a small thing, but it would be like little things like that, that would turn into like, you know, not resentment, but like, Oh, you didn't like, why are there dishes in the sink? Um, And sometimes it wouldn't even be like something that would be said, but it would be silent treatment. And I'm the type of person like, 
you know, I, I, you could, I mean, I think a lot of us, like we can sense the aura in the room. Like if there is some uncomfortability or some different moods, like you can sense that in the room. And so that would really get to me. I would have a lot of anxiety. The first few years of us getting married, I had a lot of anxiety. I would never want to be home. I would always try to book like dinner meetings. Like I work in the field, right? So I would have dinner meetings. I'd have to be out sometimes in the morning, the evening. I would actually try to not be available at night. So I didn't have to be home. Like it's really, it was really sad. Um, so I would have like evenings, like a couple days a week. Sometimes I would just be out at dinner meetings and, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would just didn't like to be home. Um, and then even just like different expectations around the house of things that needed to be done from the household perspective. Um, we had, we had a lot of issues in terms of communication because, you know, that generation never really talked about their feelings and it would just get bottled up inside and you could see it through your, the actions like body movements or just um, body language. You could see there, there's something wrong, but no one would say anything. So there would just be like this weird environment at home and everyone's just kind of like tippy toeing around each other. So it was I have, very I have a theory. I have a theory around that. So our parents all kind of moved here in the 70s and 80s, right? They didn't really live with their in-laws in their prime years when kids were being raised and, you know, maybe right after they got married and everything. So they they haven't felt the pain. And I talk to my mom about this all the time, you know? I'm like, mom, you, you never live with your in-laws. And she's like, no, 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 I did for a week in India, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, no, 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 I get it. I get that you did for a certain amount of time, but it's different. You know, um, so it, it's kind of new to them as well. Otherwise, I feel that, you know, traditionally in India, you know, a mom would have gone through what you're going through right now. So she could have handled things a little bit differently. So there's a little uh, uh, consideration there as well. And, I, and we've talked about this, too, because my my mother in law has lived with her in-laws as well. And that's how like Manan and Hero grew up with my and Nada as well for many years. It wasn't like just a week. So they did, she did have that experience. Um, but we did get through a lot of like, I think one of the things for me is like understanding her perspective because, you know, there was a lot of trauma that she had gone through in her life and that may be playing a role in the way that you know, is created in the in the home. So just having that compassion for her as well and understanding because, you know, we grew up in it, we were in a different generation. And it's hard for us to put ourselves in their shoes, because we don't know what they went through. And I know that that generation has been through a lot, whether it's just immigrate growing up in India, Im, you know, being educated as a as a woman in that time, coming here with their family, starting everything new, not understanding the language, working, you know, very menial jobs just to make ends meet and maybe not having the support of their partner. You know, we talked about gender equality. They, necess they didn't necessarily have gender equality at all because they were doing everything at home and that may play a role as well. And so I think that played a role in our family and our family dynamics, you know, having that, um, you know, how, how we went through those challenges in our family and now how things have progressed, I think has come from a lot of us understanding each other's perspective. So I'm going to bring up uh, two things. I'm going to show a picture in a minute, but uh, you guys, and we skipped uh, quickly through the uh, living with the in-laws part. There's two parts to that. Uh, one, I just want to say one, I've lived with my in-laws, which is very different than this whole scenario of the past of uh, obviously the girls living with their mother-in-law. Um, pretty much right after we got married, I lived with my in-laws. And I can tell you, and Yogi knows my father-in-law and my mother-in-law, and I've said it to many people. There's many days where I am like, I'd rather just live with them than be here with my parents, right? Um, because he's my father-in-law is amazing with all my friends. I mean, Yogi knows him better than he probably knows my dad. Um, you know, they, they get along with my friends. My mother-in-law cooks better than anybody I know. Um, and she cooks for everybody. It, they're from Africa. So obviously food is a big thing. So um, I've kind of experienced it, but I've only experienced the good is what I can tell you. So 
I know you kind of, you know, for girls, it's a very different experience. Um, but I can say that I've had a very pleasant experience with my in-laws. Um, my wife hasn't yet lived with her in-laws or my parents yet, which will eventually happen. But um, what I wanted to say is, which is kind of part of the gender equality thing, and I want to bring up this uh, image here, <laughs> which is never take sides. And so, you know, you talked about gender equality, but then there's a struggle that I believe Munnan has to deal with, which is you're his wife, but his mother is his mother and his mother he's known since birth. And so I'm sure he's doing well with it because obviously you talk about it. But to me, that is a place where the guys also have trouble. Who do they mm -hmm. side with? It's tough. Like being that middle person and Yogi can probably attest to this too, even though like it's, you know, you guys have a great relationship as well, but it's tough being that middle person because you're sort of responsible for making sure your wife is happy and also your mom, like that's your mom as well. Um, it's it's really challenging. I, I can tell you, and I don't know if Manan will ever admit to this, but it's mentally draining, it's mentally exhausting, and um, we've had to go to therapy for it. And it's, it's because it was really impacting our family like having to having to um, manage the relationships in the house, having to manage different um, um, emotions, that was that was really challenging for Manan, and he he really struggled with it because he wanted to kind of he kind of felt like that pressure that he had to make sure everybody was happy in the house, and like for that's, that's for, effectively our role is to keep the peace keep the peace that is it. and but it's such an it's such an important role but you can feel that pressure like we talk about the mental load of moms and i'm going to be talking a little bit more about that on my social media with um, some mental health specialists but we need to talk about the mental load of dads or mental load of husbands because there is a mental load and you know we can rec we should recognize that that they're also having to manage their own emotions while trying to manage emotions of everybody all the all the hormones or all the uh, people in the house right so um yeah it, there's a lot to uncover there so i um i had a formula and this is the first time i'm gonna publicly share it because it could have broken the formula if i shared it earlier but now everyone gets along well so i knew you know my parents live with me i live with them and my wife was initially, initially, I feel like it's like, oh, no, we'll live as one big family. It'll be great. It'll be such a good time, you know, but I've seen many families have challenges and everything that we talked about. So what I told my mom is when I was alone with her, we were driving somewhere and I was like, hey, mom, I was like, uh, you know, when she moves in, I assume we want it to be happy. Or would you prefer us live separate? You live separate. Like, no, no, no. I want to live together as a family, this and that and everything. I was like, you got to do one thing, right? If you want this to work, always take her side. Even if you know she's wrong, even if you know she blatantly messed up, if her and I are arguing, just take her side, yell at me if you need to. And don't worry between me and you, like we, we have this understanding and I know that you're taking her side just for the sake of it. And she was like, okay, fine. You know, and one day I was driving. I love that. Like, so then one day I was driving with my wife and I was like, Hey, listen, you, you want to live with my parents? You could, Oh, no, I would love to live with a big family and everything. I was like, you got to do one thing. No matter what happens, always take mom's side. Even if you know she's wrong, if me and mom are arguing, just take her side. Even if you know 100% I'm right and she's wrong, just take her side and don't worry. I, we're not going to fight about it. I know what you're doing. Okay. 20 years later or 15 years, however long it's been, they're like best friends and the fights in the house are my mom, my dad, and my wife all versus me. And I'll take that all day long. This is That's great. Amazing. And honestly, they get along really well. I mean, they have their like small things here and there, but they fight far less than my wife and I fight or anything like that. So they have just gotten that bond. And again, I'm sharing this formula and they might both hear this and be like, well, what a scammer. But I think it, <laughs> we're so deep into it that they're like, they're like best friends. They, they, they're on the same page about everything. Cause I think mentally when she comes into the house and if she did make a mistake, but she sees my mom taking her side, I feel like she's like, man, this, this lady has my back and vice versa. You know, deep down inside, everybody knows 
if my mom knows that like, hey, she made a mistake or she might be off, she's like, man, this girl's taking my side. And they just create that united front and it stood really strong. So I played this little game before we got married and they get along great. Like, I, I've I never had mother-in-law and daughter-in-law issues. What was that? I think that's such great advice. It's like very practical because I think a lot of the relationship issues can be solved before you even get married. You know, you can prevent a lot of those because you're setting that up. You're setting that relationship up for success. And Manan did something similar. He didn't do that. I, I think if he did that, it would have it would have really helped. So this is great advice. I hope you put it in the, the video. But he talked to his family before we got married. He sat everybody down. They had a family meeting and he was like, you know, we're getting married soon. Nikki's going to be coming to our house. We, we, we all need to be on the same page. If there's any issues, like you need to tell me, or you need to, we need to talk about it, but we need to all think about what is our goal as a family? Do we want to live together? Do we want to be happy? Then we should keep that as our goal. Keep that in our mind, no matter what situation we may go through, because we we're going to have, you know, we're going to have to adjust. She's going to have to adjust. We're going to have to adjust, but we all need to be on this, you know, same page. So it's really smart. And it's again, coming back to like, what is the role the husband plays? It's important because they are the one sort of, you know, I can't go tell his mom how, you know, if like directly all the time, like if something's really bothering me, um, you know, I end up having to tell Manan and Manan has to sort of kind of bring everybody together, right? So it's it's an important role that the husband plays. So I love that you did that. And I think, you know, a, a lot of issues can be prevented if the husband comes in and plays that role and sets it up for success. So next, I think we need to talk about, obviously, because a lot of what you're saying is a part of this new venture that you have um, called Home Shanti. Um, Shanti, I'm assuming, is based on your daughter. Um, and the fact that it also means peace. Um, it, it's something that's needed. And obviously every topic that we just talked about pretty much has to do with uh, kind of peace in the house. But uh, why did you start this? As I've been sharing a lot about my journey in our family, in terms of growing in a joint family and just relationships between my husband and I, it's been really humbling. Honestly, so many people have been messaging me and i know people say this all the time like oh i got so many messages about uh, uh, so many dms from from followers and i don't i don't think i'm an influencer at all i'm just you know sharing my life i have so much to learn um from so many people but you know as i share my story on online on social media there's so many others that have gone through or are going through similar situations i know personally through interactions i've had with my friends and family a lot of us have you know, we're, we're trying to make it work, right? We, we, we have a lot to learn in this, in this area in terms of balance in our family, um, maintaining those relationships in our family. And I think a lot of the things that we've learned through our challenges and through our conflicts, I wish I had learned earlier. And I know a lot of things you can't learn until you actually go through the experience, but like the advice that you 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 gave around how to set up your family for success and prevent some of those conflicts from the beginning. Like I want to be able to share those things with others that may have to go through challenges in their own life, in their own family. So, you know, I think today's the generation and age where we're going to see a lot more issues within families. We're probably going to see a lot more divorces. Unfortunately, we're going to see a lot more broken families just because of how society is progressing and how individuals and in this modern day and age, like there's so much focus on, you know, doing your own thing and um, living individually and having independence. And there's not as much emphasis on how to make things work and how to resolve conflicts and how to focus on that in your relationships. And especially with now, like a lot of us are working professionals. I see this a lot in the corporate world where you're, you're just being pushed to climb the corporate ladder and work harder and work, um, put pour all your time into your work where family kind of comes to the side. Um, so, I mean, the reason that I started this sort of like so new social media page and this, this project or launch of home shanti was to bring that focus back into 
families where we do focus on relationships and nurturing those relationships. We focus on um, practical tools and solutions like for us. And I know so many families that sit down every week for a family meeting. We call it Garsaba. And that's something that was inspired by our guru, Pramukh Sai Maharaj, right? When he came here in the 1970s and kind of see how saw how families and modern world is, there was a huge need for connection within the families mm -hmm. because there were there was a lot of broken families, right? And so especially with the new generation with kids and you want to be able to bring that connection back. So he emphasized Garsaba or family meetings to help connect families with each other. And we didn't do that initially, right? We, yeah. we, we kind of only had family meetings when we had a problem and we would all have like tears and, you know, it would be like a huge family conflict. But when we started doing this a lot more regularly, we saw how it really shifted and transformed our family. So when I started, started sharing about this, a lot of people were like, how do you do family meetings? How do you, um, you know, what do you talk about? How do you do it when your partner isn't on the same page? Or how do you do if your in-laws aren't on the same page? And how do you involve your kids? And how do you kind of break the cycle? So that sort of inspired me to create something that would provide tools, provide sort of a voice for families of this generation to break the cycle and be able to use things like family meetings to have those closer connections. So that's sort of the, the inspiration behind it. Shanti has multiple meanings. So Shanti means peace. Shanti is also my daughter's name, but Shanti is also the childhood name of Pramukh Sai Maharaj. And he's the reason that our family is together because if it wasn't for Garsaba, if it wasn't for the focus on family and the focus on family unity and some, which is my son's name, mm -hmm. our family wouldn't be living together. I could tell you that we would be living separately. Do you want to talk about the, uh, the birth experience with Shanti? What do you want to, what do you want me to talk about? Okay. We don't want to make it <laughs> too long, but whatever you think is important for somebody. Um, I mean, okay. So, when I had my daughter, my second daughter, we had a lot of challenges during childbirth. And without going into too many details, I essentially almost died when I was giving when I was giving birth to my daughter. I was wheeled in to get an emergency C-section. And when they did the C-section, they realized that my uterus had torn on both sides. And I was going to potentially have to have a hysterectomy. And so on the operating table, I'm kind of, you know, they had to give me general anesthesia. And as I was going under, I hear the doctor saying, We're, we might have to do a hysterectomy. And I'm like, I don't know what this means, but, you know, it was scary. And they ended up being able to repair. But during that process, what happened was my husband and my daughter um, they were wheeled out and they had to do additional surgery because of all the complications. And my husband was in the waiting room for three hours and had no idea what was happening to me. And he didn't know if I was going to make it. It was really scary for him, I think, more than me because I was under general anesthesia. But there was a lot of really scary thoughts that I think he was having during that time because he didn't know if I was going to make it. And so a couple, I guess an hour later, the doctor came in and just gave an update. Like, you know, it seems it's very complicated and we are having, we're going to have to operate on her for a couple of hours. Um, and just, just pray, like just pray everything works out. And so my husband was doing prathna praying. Um, he's had talked to so, like some of the swamis from the mandir just to get courage during that time. And luckily everything worked out. You know, I, they ended up being able to essentially save my life. The doctor said that, you know, it was sort of a life or death situation. After the surgery got into recovery, found out that there was some additional complications with, with Janthi and potential, um, uh, you know, seizure activity. So they had to monitor her in the NICU because she had a skull fracture and it was like mm. all these childbirth 
issues that happens. It was it was really scary for us in the in the in the hospital. Um, first with me, like life or death situation, and then we didn't know if this was going to have an impact on our daughter for the future. And so for me, I'm thinking like all these thoughts, like why did this happen to me? What you know, did I do this to myself? Like why did I even go for you know trying to have a natural birth? And I should have just went for a C-section. Like there was all these thoughts, but I think um, we got a lot of courage and faith. You know, at that time, our faith was tested. Our courage was tested and just remembering that, you know, God tests you in so many different ways that we don't realize it until afterwards. And that was a huge test for us. Like, I don't think I realized it at that time. And I would never wish for anything like that to ever happen to anybody. But now looking back, I feel like that strengthened us as a family because it brought us together during that life or death situation. Um my mom, my parents, like everybody was like so emotional during that time because, you know, like you don't know if your your daughter is going to make it or your your granddaughter is going to make it. I also had complications after birth. Like it was it was just like a scary time for all of us as a family, but it brought us together. And I think yeah. for me, it like really put things into perspective in life. Like anything can happen to any of us at any time. So prioritize your relationships, prioritize your family. It's, you know, you never know if today's going to be your last day. Right. And, um, and just having that faith is so important because when we have those ups and downs in life, you don't realize how important faith and spirituality is. It really provides so much courage yeah. and we take it for granted, you know, like we do Pratna every day, but you know, we don't, we don't realize how important that, that small thing, time that we invest into ourselves and having that gratitude, having that mindfulness, we don't realize how important that is. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Wait, so oh, we made it. <laughs> well, it was here. it. That was perfect. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, I just cried. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was, well, I mean, no, I just, about it. I'm just like, it's, it's really emotional. Yes. Nice. Okay. So moving on to a lighter note. Yes. <laughs> um, let uh, your, what is your proudest moment? I hope this is lighter. I hope this isn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So my proudest moment, honestly, is really centered around my, my family and um, my, I, you know, my kids, Sump and Shanti, obviously, like every parent will say that they're so proud of their kids. But um, I'm really proud of us. Like my husband and I, I think we've been through a lot together. And you can see them here. They, you know, we've had a lot of challenges in our in our family life, in our relationship. But we've gone through what we've we've really tried to make it the best life for our family. And I think our kids really inspire us. There's a reason that they're named, their names are Sump and Shanti. Like Sump means unity, Shanti means peace. And that's a guiding light, light for our family because it it's like, we, we know we need to work on it. Like they always remind us that we need to work on keeping that unity within our family, keeping that peace within our family and getting over our own little egos and, and, challenges that we may have or expectations of each other. Um, the other aspect of this is just, you know, being involved in a community center like Mandir. This is Robbinsville Akshardham. We live close to Mandir and it's the biggest blessing in our life. And my husband got to do Seva there for a year. And we're, you know, it's it's been such an amazing opportunity being able to contribute to something like this and being a part of it. And we're just so proud and, and grateful to be a part of something like this that is giving back to the community. It's a beautiful family and uh, and Manan, but. And Manan. 